Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Supersonic JV. Welcome back to you. DDLC, World of Dreams for the PC. So, yeah, last time we went ahead and did more of the story and uh, told the girls about the other me, you know, the Josh Sub JV side and everything. And, uh, yeah, we found out Monica's been kicked out of her house and now she's living with us. And we had her play the Doki Doki Literature Club game and everything. And, uh, yeah, now we're continuing on. Let me do more of the story in today's episode. So we're gonna go go we're gonna go ahead and get started with the video. Make sure you hit that like button. That's a really helps out a lot. And comment subscribe to my channel. Alright. That's what I just wanted to say. Sorry if I messed up my words there, but whatever you do. But uh yeah, we're just gonna uh, continue on the story, you know, have some good times and anything, so let's do it. It's showtime. When I enter the cafeteria, Mike is waiting for me at the corner table with two trays. Oh, she bought me lunch. How nice. I see the familiar uh, chicken curry at that empty spot opposite her and smiles. I sit. How'd you know that's what I was gonna get? <laughs> I saw you got this one reading over Monday's script. Oh. Interesting. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, thank you for that. Sit down and sigh softly. What if I didn't want to get that today, though? Then what would you do, girl? And she's like, oh, I'm sorry. Josh, what's wrong? I just had an encounter with Yai. That's how Monica about Yai still called off her friendship. Uh oh, look at the angry face! Angry Monica time! She looks pissed, man. Monica gets angry with each word. She almost slams her fist against the table when I finish, girl! Monica! Even the music's like, no. That lady's a bitch. That bitch, I knew I should have decked her the moment she hurt Yuri. Yeah, Monica, go out and teach her a lesson, you know? Put him up, you know? Whoa, well, calm down there. Take it easy, sweetheart. Josh, you don't know how bad she is. Kawahashi. Kawahashi, yeah. She's pretty rich, and she's been known to get students expelled. Oh. Damn it, I need to watch the other girls closely now. What the heck? Why the heck that happened? I don't remember that. Hey, don't be a look up so upset. Remember who you're talking to, Monica? Monica lowers her voice and leans a bit forward. Oh, she's going to say, I can delete her. I won't delete her. I could just make life tougher for her. What is with the evil look in your eyes, girl? Monica! How oh, she cried. It happened again, didn't it? Yeah, the dark side of you took over. My heart sings as I see her pan panic again. Monica, listen to me. She looked over at me. It's okay, I know you mean well. Besides, you don't want to become the Monica from that game. She stops trembling. Let's change the subject, huh? She nods. I'd like that. Great. What would you like to talk about? Marcus thinks a bit and then smiles. Oh, you never told me about yourself and your world. Please tell me about you. Hey, it's music. I love this remix. Sounds great. All right. Only he tell me about you, too. Deal. Hey, let me in on this. Oh, Meiji wants to join. That's fine. I'd love to be friends with you, too, Meiji. I'll start. I was born on January 11th, 1999 in my town's general hospital. You know? That's what happens. My parents were in their last year of college, and I wasn't really planned, but they just dropped out of school just to get more work to support me. My grandma and my mom said actually let my parents move into her house for a few years. One of my first memories was of playing on my parents' bed in the basement. Playing on my parents' bed in the basement? What? Basement? Was there no room upstairs? Oh no, you misunderstood. In America, some houses have what is called a mother-in-law apartment or suite. It's basically a miniature house, either underneath the main house or separate. This one has been a basement until my grandma had it converted. There was a small living room, a kitchen, and bedroom where my parents and I slept. Alright, there's no laughter in this one, so... Grandma will always have us for dinner to help us save on food and money. Your parents sound amazing. Sounds a bit envy there. They are. When I was about five years old, Dad got offered a higher position at his job, but only if he finished his degree. My grandma, my grandma helped pay for some of the tuition. Dad used some of their savings for the rest. I didn't see a lot of Dad that year, but he made sure to spend major holidays with us, like Thanksgiving, Christmas, Fourth of July, stuff like that. And my birthday, obviously. Did he graduate? Oh yeah, he did. He started making enough money that he would afford a small apartment nearer to work. When I was like seven or so, Mom went back to finish college herself. When she was done, she had a better paying position too. But she wasn't selected like Dad was. She worked her ass off for it. Well, I mean, Dad did too, but they asked him personally. We moved again when I was eight into our first house. And we lived there for a year, five years. I missed that house. Why'd you leave it then? It wasn't my choice. There was a fire and we lost a, a lot. A lot of precious uh, mementos burned. I'm so sorry. I'm glad you weren't hurt. But it really is a shame to lose those memories. It was mom and dad did their, 
didn't insure the house though. So we got some money from the insurance company. They used to get all that new stuff for our, excuse me, for our newer, bigger house. Good. High school years aren't exactly much to talk about. I was a decent student. After I graduated, I started going to my town's local community college. For after two years, I transferred to another college out of the state. All my college classes were online so I could work more often and pay my share of the rents. Rent? Give me rent! You'll get your rent when you fix this damn door! <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm going to say how many of my parents work at. I'm part of the accounting department. Not exactly how in that company, but I'm good with numbers. What do you mean in your... What do you do in your free time? Uh, look at pictures of you. Okay, no! Stop! Okay, that was a little much. Alright, well, we're just going to move on. Uh, well, I like a lot of things. Maybe it's likes, I, likes, I suppose. Uh, anime, manga, and games, but I do like to read books and write too not just poems but full-blown stories interesting i love to read one sometime i love to share i love to have your opinion about this after we stop the game from ha actually happening i bring in my have and share with everyone oh couldn't i read it before then damn she's one foxy woman <laughs> no arguments here yeah i'll t tell you i'll let you read them first anyways you and Major want to go next <laughs> let Major go you sure you sure <laughs> Yes. Alright, well this is going to be a bit unusual, so bear with me. I'll repeat everything. I was born on January 21st, 1999. My dad's already... Oh no, so July, sorry. My dad already had an older sister, Aiko. They raised up both pretty well, I think. I must say already when I was about five or so. Anyway, it might be hard to believe, but we didn't really start off as friends. Wait, really? That's surprisingly, considering that you're, you're all she ever talks about. Well, we eventually became pretty close. We always gone to the same school. When we were in middle school, I guess that was when things started to go downhill between the two of us. Wait, how? I don't know. I guess it started when someone confessed to her. Whoa, hold on. Someone confessed to Sayori? Yeah, it was this guy from her class. She always been friendly to everyone. He, she's always been friendly to everyone. I guess this guy took it the wrong way. That makes sense. I mean, I've been confessed to a few times. Lots of guys take friendly chat as a sign that someone is interested. Are you interested in me, Monica? I am. Not really. What's your name again? Okay. I'm guilty of that. So, don't worry. So, I guess she didn't need to me around anymore. Dude, she totally needed you then. And she needs you now. Josh, are you crying? What? I'm not crying. My eyes are, are watering. Allergies, Monica. Come on, huh? No, sometimes Meiji's emotions bleed through. And there's a physical reaction. That hasn't raised any red flags for you? I've been a bit pre preoccupied. Right, sorry. It's fine, Meiji. Well, there isn't much to tell you about. I retreated into my own bubble until this past Sunday. I understand, AJ. I understand, AJ. I may not know Sayori as well, but I do know she cares deeply for you. You came up in conversation a lot. I feel my cheeks blush. Now it's your turn, Monica. Ah, <laughs> right. I was born September 22nd, 1999 in Okinawa. Believe it or not. Okay, the music's all depressing now, so I don't like that. From my memories, I'm half Japanese and half American. Hey, interesting. Father was an American soldier stationed at Camp Courtney, and my mom was the daughter of a small, a local small-time businessman. I guess my grandfather was opposed to the match and gave my mother an olatum or to abort me or marry someone he had selected for her. She chose the latter. I wouldn't have learned this if I hadn't gotten a letter from my biological father, which explains all this. You know, I haven't seen it since the game started. It's one of my most precious mementos. It's back at my home, sadly. I find myself clenching my fists. That's holy shit! It never happened, really. It's because it may not have happened doesn't mean it isn't going to affect you. Memories, fake or otherwise, are a part of who you are. Right now, you're as human as I am, as a human as Meiji, Sayori, Yuri, and Natsuki. I suppose you're right. My stepfather and mother moved here a month before I was born. My stepfather doesn't know if I'm know that I'm not his real daughter and I don't think he really needs to know. He was very strict in raising me to be a proper lady. He pushed me to be my best, like no one ever was. Okay. <laughs> my entire childhood was filled with my father and mother making sure I got the best education. I've been a straight A student, the best of the best. If I got one answer on a test wrong, I was severely punished. Ooh. I was always popular at school when I joined the debate club. My parents were so proud of me. But you know what happened after they found out about me quitting and starting my own club. Monica, I'm so sorry. Aw, poor Monica. Don't be sorry. I'm lucky you and Major are both kind enough to have me stay in your ha warm place. 
Well, neither of us would be able to live with ourselves turning away someone, someone away. Plus, Sayori would kill me. I feel what maybe says Monica seemed simply last. <laughs> she probably would. True. Monica then looks at her phone. Shit. Oh, Monica. Language. Good, good ma'am. I was gonna say good sir, but good ma'am. I'm oh, sorry. Sorry, get this short, but lunch is almost over. Swearing from you? Why, Monica? I didn't know you were so naughty. Wink, wink. <laughs> I can't wear playful at somewhat. Sultry wink. What? Just because I'm a girl, I can't fucking swear, you magnificent bastard! <laughs> That's funny. Now, of course, you can fucking swear, you magnificent bitch. Damn right, I can't. Mark, I said the F word. That felt. You really. Freeing, actually, huh? My parents would kill me if they heard me. No doubt. Look at my hear someone calling out Major's name. There you are. You need to come with me now. Uh oh, here we go. I remember this part. What's going on? It's your busty friend. It's being assaulted by your group busty friend. Wow, Monica, let's go. Right. All right. You slap her. I'll uh look good. <laughs> Well, I run right down to school, falling to Zoe. I see a group of students ganging up on someone. There are bits of paper scattered everywhere. You know, students shouting, Cut! 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 And the sound of a girl sobbing. I'll handle the crowd to get Yuri away from there. Sounds good. Got it. I wonder where I see Yuri being surrounded. I turn up to the eye who's standing apart from the rest. He's just laughing. What the hell is going on here? And here's the main event, ladies and gentlemen. Meiji. What the fuck are you doing, you bitch? <laughs> tsk, tsk, you had your chance and you blew it. And you really can't talk to a lady like that, you know. Don't you have any manners? Look who's talking, you crazy psycho! I tossed my blazer aside. Fuck you, manners don't apply to someone like you. Oh! <laughs> Why should I expect someone who uses blackmail on their parents' money to control people? My parents are too stupid to care about anything I do. I, I whine, they give me shit. Oh my god, I pay these people, they do what I want. It's just how the world works. And why shouldn't I? My parents are useless. Oh, useless, useless, useless! Did she just, I think she's got parent parental issues too. Finish that sentence? I fucking dare you. Okay. I cracked my knuckles, letting my fury get the better of me. You are so dead, you slut. Easy, man, easy. Whoa, just take it easy, man. Someone grabs me. Not so fast, bastard. Feel, feel from the blow. Shit, that hurts. I climb with the tree and the student grabs my collar. Just stay down, it'll be easier. No, it won't, you fucking bastard. I kick him in the nuts while he falls over. You're next, you fucking shit. Calm down, calm down. You were combat last time, now you're just like, I'm pissed. I'm going the Incredible Hulk on them. You're not going anywhere, and don't bother telling anyone. No one will believe you. Monica, because I take Yuri and get the fuck out of here. Major, don't. Go! Monica and Gazoe take Yuri away. I find myself surrounded by Yai's group. Just remember, this is your punishment. Ha 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 ha! This is all. This is as your bones are broken. I get what I want. I always win. Hey, stop! This isn't your body, you asshole. I think I can hear Major saying something, but I ignore it. Dude, don't. Fight begins. One of them swings wildly. A duck can hit him, but it doesn't do much. Damn this weak body. I need my old body back! <laughs> Another one of them lands a blow on me. Get him from behind as fast as I can. I continue to throw punches the most wild. What's the matter? Not gonna fight? Fuck you, you bitch! <laughs> Too late for this. All the swearing in this mod, dude. He interfered with your. He inter interfered with our little fun yesterday. That's a big no no for me, baby boy. Your little fun involved bullying like. Oh, wait, I. I I didn't even get a chance to read that. You'll find involved bullying my friend. That's a big no-no for you. <laughs> uh, I felt flat on my back. She's a freak, just like your literature club. That bimbo cut herself and collects knives. Just how does that not scream freak to you? I think you're fighting with my anger and lack of fighting abilities is beginning to take its toll. I don't know much about her. Likes and dislikes, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't like her or any less if those things were true. This hurts. I get kicked in the stomach. I fly back into a tree. The wind being knocked out of me. I'll kill you. Uh -huh, you can't hit a girl. You can't hit a girl, remember? 
but I can. Oh, Kojin, no, what the hell? You? That's not. That's enough out of you. Bitch, please, you can't fight, and you don't have the guts to. Oh, oh, slap in his entry! Look at that slap! I don't remember. The, I don't remember that slap and the thing. But interesting art right there. So yeah, I was just trying to get another slap. See, I crossed the face hard, leaving a red handprint. Yeah, go girl! That's why you're second best girl. Okay, well, arguably, but yeah, that's under a smack of Tanoa's hand on Yaya's cheek, that goes throughout the courtyard. Who's been beating, beating me up? Stop gapping. The silence is split. Whatever. Yeah, he's almost frozen in shock, but slowly turns to, back to Kodanoa. Haha. <laughs> my, my, you really do have some balls after all. While I'm done with this virgin loser, I'll deal with you. Let MayJ go. Oh, since when were you on its first name terms with this freak? None of your business. Yeah, girl. Now, poor is. Now, stop this before I break the proper authorities into this. Shh. They're just as useless as my idiot parents. Especially our principal, that useless old bastard. Useless old bastard, am I? Oh, the principal's here! Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah, Smug grins and falters and she goes pale. God damn it, Josh, I swear that all. Damn, what just happened? Sir, I didn't mean. I don't want to hear it! More teachers begin showing up, looking upset. An older woman in a white lab co coat. Uh, rushes over. I'm guessing the nurse. Kawahashi, step over here right now! Oh, yeah, that's it. The principal, sorry. But no, rushes over to me. Are you alright, Mei J? It hurts everywhere. Chiba san, let the nurse through. Sorry, Sensei. Nurse, how's the young man? Nurse comes over and looks me over. The cuts aren't as bad as they look, but I want to treat him right away. We don't need to, we don't need to go to the hospital. Go! Monica rushes over to me. Are you crazy? Are you two a couple? I know, she's just the president of my club. And her smiles. Yeah, a very caring president. I look up ap ap apologetically at Monica and myself to begin to turn. What did I just do? No kidding. I cry my blades as we head inside. Okay. So I just lost. I went Hulk mode on everybody, you know? But I was losing the fight. I was saved by Kotonoa and the teachers and stuff. To walk out to the nurse's office, he puts me in a bed and ties me up. You should just rest for a day. Thanks. Nurse heads to the desk and, it's, and sits. Two girls remain silent for a bit. Major, hey are you sure you're alright? My family has its own private doctor who could treat you. I mean, that sounds pretty nice, but I don't know if it's that necessary. This girl, everything, hi. Listen, I like her. She's nice. Yeah. She's rich and everything, but she's so kind and caring. But there is something suspicious about her, as we find out later in the mod and everything. Like, I don't know what it is, but there is something she's hiding. I don't know. Thanks for the offer, but I should be fine. Well, if you're absolutely sure, but you seem pretty reckless out there, you know? Don't I know it? Well, I should get going now. I don't want to disturb your rest. Thanks, Kodano. Of course. I make sure my friends are always well taken care of. Like, is she One Slap Woman 2.0? Like, the original One Slap Woman is a uh, Lubia, but she's One Slap Woman 2.0, maybe? Farewell. Kodano leaves. Leave me alone with Monica. Wait, did she just say farewell? Odd one, but in a good way. Monica, who doesn't, hasn't said a thing since we got here, finally moves and sits next to my bed. Wait for her to grab her thoughts. I hate you. Oh, We got the sad music playing again. Damn it. Monica, I'm sorry. I. How long have you been this stupid? Well, um, since the day I was born. Okay. Thanks, <laughs> you know, And here I thought I managed to keep my anger in check. 20 years, I feel more guilt pouring over me, and it must be showing because Monica's face softens. I'm sorry I didn't mean to lash out. I just don't want to lose you. Monica, reach out and take her hand. You have every right to get angry at me. Acting stupidly, I know that. I'm sorry. Her slides open quickly. Sarah rushes in, looking extremely pissed. Gary follows, looking rudely at me. You're really stupid, you know that? You promised me you wouldn't do anything stupid again. Sarah, what was I supposed to do? They were attacking Yuri. I couldn't sit back and do nothing. But I really think I went too far. Well, are you alright? I look over my injuries. To my surprise, it doesn't look like I was hurt as much as I thought. I look worse than I feel. But are you alright? They didn't hurt me. Monica and Tani-san got there just in time. Good. Um, what about your book? My book, it's destroyed. Aww, look poor Yuri. Poor Yuri. Look at, look at all their, their crying faces. It's so sad. I'm sorry, ladies. 
I'm sorry I wasn't there to help sooner. I know you like that book. It's okay. It's just a book. Smiling sadly, I slowly stand walking over. I wrap my arms around her. She falls on my sh shoulder, sobbing hard. It was more than a book to, to you, wasn't it? It was me talking, sorry. You're gonna use crying, gathering your thoughts. I got that book from my grandpa before he died. It was precious to me. Aw. I moved back to the bed, sitting down with Yuri. Grandpa loved reading as much as I did. He would give me the books that was the last one I ever received from him. Oh, damn. Yeah, I swear next time I see you, I'm going to tear your throat out. Dumbass, you... Yeah, fuck it. I blame Kamei Jake. He yells at me furiously, which snaps me out of my returning anger. Yuri, I'm so sorry. It's not your fault. I don't say that it was. You were looking out for a friend. I do the same for all of you. Oh, you better listen to me now. She's using that motherly tone again. You need to rest, so lie down. Yes, ma'am. Okay, everyone, we should all get back to class. Lunch is pretty much over. Well, well, we see you at the club time. As long as this young man takes it easy, he should be well enough to join you. Piece of cake. I do that all the time. I grin. <laughs> I'll be fine. See you later. Girls, leave. Hour minutes later, the door opens. Zoe walks in carrying Major's school bag. She puts it down and turns to leave. Hey, Zoe, wait. Eh? I want to thank you for coming to tell me about how what was happening and for helping. Zoe stands there, not saying anything. Finally, she hesitantly speaks. Are you having fun in that club? Okay, so, gotta admit, I wasn't expecting that response. Ah, uh, well, yes, yes I am. It's been a difficult couple of days, but it's not been bad. Zoe runs out. The nurse comes up to me. You need to try and get some rest. Here, take some of these. She hands me a glass of water and some white pills. Look at them apprehensively. They're painkillers. They should help you sleep. Okay, sure they are. Or are they poison? Okay. I think the nurse takes the glass. I lie down and the nurse goes back to her desk. I decided to try and apologize to Mayjay. Mayjay, are you there? Listen, I'm really sorry. I already set my boundaries. My bounds there. Just let me sleep, okay? This tone is like ice. And I lie down so they close my eyes. Two of us fall asleep. Music got real loud there, too. Like my my normal music isn't even really out that high, but so whatever. I wake up hours later. Point o'clock. There's still a few minutes left before class is over and call time begins. It is asleep. I sit up and begin gathering my stuff when a shadow looms over me. I look out sheepishly at the nurse. And just where do you think you're going? My club. Sit back down. I need to change your wrappings. Sit back down and let her change her bandages as they're cleaning the wounds. Are they all right? Or oh, that's me talking. Whatever. Just keep them clean and bandaged up, and you'll be fine. I don't want to see you in here again. I'll certainly try. <laughs> I grab my bag and leave. Okay. First things first, make sure Yuri's okay. I make my way over to her classroom. I hear some whispered comments that I pass, and I feel some eyes on me, but I ignore them. At that moment, Meiji wakes up. I hear him yawning. Hey, Meiji. Guess I'm getting the silent treatment now like I don't deserve it, I guess. I try and keep my tone friendly. I'm going to get Yuri and go to the club club room. Sound good? Sure, do whatever you want. Damn it. Walk into their classroom see us her at, at the protagonist's seat, putting away her belongings. Yuri. She looks, sees me all rushed over, looking concerned. Meiji, should, shouldn't you be resting? I'm feeling well enough to walk, at least, so don't worry. I actually came to take you and Monica to the club. I pick up Moro... Moto Moto san After yesterday's little debate, I don't think she'd want to see me. Well, that's very kind of you. I'm sure. As for Natsuki, I don't think she hates you. She's just not getting used to you yet. Hold on, I'll be right out. Okay, sounds good. She grabs her uh, belongings and joins me. I look inside Monica's classroom, but she's gone. Same with Natsuki. Not sure not where Natsuki is, but I bet Monica's in the space classroom. Guess it's just you and me today. Oh, um, I guess so. We begin walking into the cl club room. Are you sure you're alright? You still look unwell. I'll admit being violently sick and then getting being up in the same week isn't something conductive to a healthy living. The nurse gave me some painkillers, plus my injuries aren't as bad as they look either. Well, that's good. We walk in silence for a while. As we walk, the students begin thinning out as we head up to the stairs. A little while later, Yuri speaks out again. So, um, I wanted to ask you earlier, well, where did you get Portrait of Morkov? That book isn't exactly an easy one to find. In the library, I believe? <laughs> okay. There isn't even an iBook ebook version. I should know. I've looked. I pulled out the book. Is it? Huh, well, on Monday I made Sayori come out with me to pick up some manga, but she made me promise to buy an actual book as well. I paid out that one because it looked interesting and not only something I'd read. I hold it out to her. 
but you can have it. Be, you can have it if you want. It'd be substitute for the one you lost, but no. Okay, a bit harsh. I mean, I'm um, sorry. It's okay. She looks back. I don't want to deprive you of this book. It's very rare. Plus, I have two spare copies back at home. You had spare copies? Okay, uh, whatever. I mean, who gave... The, did you just buy two more or something? I don't know. I was lucky enough to find them on sale. On, okay, on Tuesday. Yeah, I should have read that first, but whatever. That's how I left me to his house. Well, that's good. I appreciate the gesture, though. It's my pleasure. Well, I'd like to hear about what you think about the book. It's a personal favorite of mine. Really? Well, I've only gotten to the part where Fujiko is starting her research on a third eye. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. you're quite in for the treat then. Yeah, I believe it. Is that a standalone book? Oh, yes, it is. No other book like it has ever been made. What do you mean? Well, the manuscript apparently just showed up one day in multiple publishings. House's Mail. So, it just got mailed to everybody? I mean, I get this is a game world, but... What in the world? That's so weird. Just like you go on the mailbox, open it up. Oh, there's a book here. Let me read it. Oh, it's satanic uh, chanting when I'm reading the book. Okay. No one could find the author. Of course no one could. That's odd. Did they publish... Did they all... Did they all publish it? No, it was just one publisher. Sadly, it was panned by the critics. They referred to it by a few names, but I don't want to wish to repeat. Sure, that's fine. Oh, we're here. Thanks for the walk and talk, Yuri. Ah, oh, no problem at all, Josh. People made to the club where Yuri makes a beeline for the closet. <laughs> She's out of there. She grabs the tea set. Let's head to close the door and say her verse in. Josh, are you doing okay? This is still hurt, unfortunately, but not as bad as before. Never seen me some painkillers. Good. Don't scare me like that again. Behave, doggy. What? Hey! I ain't no doggy. Rough, rough. Okay, now. Wolf, exactly. <laughs> Seriously, come on, Mayj. Isn't this a bit much? Good boy. You seem chipper even after lunch and even earlier this morning. Did something happened this morning? Um, well, we'll tell you once. Moto, moto, son. <laughs> Monica, all right. What a really hard. Can we go to call her Natsuki? Because even though it's hilarious to call her Moto, moto, son. <laughs> it's just... uh, I think we should go on first terms names or whatever. Well, while we wait, I have a favor to ask. I'm kind of hungry. Do you have enough money to buy a snack, girl? There is an eyebrow and smile. I might not know you as well as Major does, but your appetite certainly is legendary. And <laughs> Major, didn't you tell him? Come on, this is getting ridiculous. I've seen it for firsthand. Remember a little cinnamon roll? Cinnamon bun? Okay. Yeah, cinnamon bun. Did Major call me that? that? No, that's my nickname for you. Meanie, now I want cinnamon buns. Except the... Retribution, I know how sneaky you really are. Where's the rest of your money? At home, I bet? Bring out Mage's wallet. Oh, if anything, I'm weak to a uh, woman's charms. Why don't we both go and get you something to tie you over until dinner? Yuri, do you want me to get you anything? Oh, um, I'll be fine. Don't worry about me. Nonsense, I insist. Well, um, if you're insisting, I'll be fine with something that goes well with tea. Uh... I'm just gonna get you whatever I feel like it, girl. <laughs> Uh, Reese's being the better cuffs. Yeah, for Yuri. Here you go, girl. You can enjoy those with your tea. Are you sure? I can't get it. I can get it myself, you know. They didn't bring Major's legs, say, Yuri. I can walk this fine. Besides, you get all the snacks before you go back. Meanie. Well, sorry. Let's go. <laughs> oh, man. This is a nice little bending area and everything. So, leads me to this near its vending machines, which are downstairs. There's one thing I like about Japan. It's the uniqueness of the vending machine selections. You get a small matcha cake for Yuri, a few cookies for Natsuki, a copy cake for Monica, and then I let Siri choose a few sweets for herself. Dude, how much does this cost in you? That's gotta at least be 10 bucks. I get a small candy bar for myself once we're loaded up for the goodies we head back. Walking down the hall and into the club, club room we go. When we get there, I see Natsuki already arrived. She's grumbling over something in the closet. I hand that matcha cake to Yuri, who is brewing some tea. I turn to Natsuki. We're Moto Moto! Here! <laughs> a peace offering! Do you think something as simple as a few cookies would sap me, set my, save my wrath? She grabs the cookies. Obviously not, but I figured it to start. Listen, can we talk somewhere alone? I bet she's actually mad at me just because I keep calling her Moto Moto. 
That's the real truth. Whatever you have to say to me, we can say it in front of the whole club. Fair enough. Listen, I want to apologize for lying and for everything else I may have not, I may have done to make you hate me this much. Erk. You idiot, I don't hate you. I'm just pissed that you made Sayori cry. Get over it, girl! I know, and you have every right to be angry. I should have said something from the start. But if I had, I wouldn't be here. You're damn right you should have. But Sayori seemed to be feeling better today. Suppose I can give you another chance. Also heard about how you rushed to help Yuri stay from that bitchy eye. That's a boss. I I'm impressed. Did I mishear her? What did you say? <laughs> I'm impressed, okay? Oh, well, um, thank you, Emoto Emoto. <laughs> Natsuki. Oh, she's sick and tired of hearing me call her Emoto Emoto son. So she's like, call me Natsuki already. Quit calling me that hippo name. I'm sick and tired of your stupid crap. You ever call me that again? It's over. I swear to God, I'll kill you with the knife and everything. That's what she's saying. Pardon? You didn't call me Natsuki. Seriously, don't make me repeat myself. Hey, okay, thank you, Natsuki chan. I can't help it. She really is cute, very cute when she's like this. Don't push it. All right then, buddy. <laughs> I'm not your buddy, friend. I'm not your friend, gal. I'm not your gal, buddy. I'm not your buddy, friend. <laughs> Monica, can you tell? Can you tell Josh here to? Eh. Natsuki runs around. Monica still hasn't arrived. Before anything can be said, the door slides open. Monica rushes in. Sorry, I'm super late. Ah uh, ha ha. Monica rushes in, out of breath, and begins coughing. He hands her a cup of tea. Are you alright? Monica runs. Monica downs the contents of the cup in one gulp. <laughs> yeah, I just seriously lost track of time. Oh, but don't worry, you guys. Oh, no need to worry, Monica. You're right on time. Oh, that's good. So, did I miss anything? Natsuki and I made a, of a bit. Yeah, I can call her that now. I still don't know about you, but Siri seems okay with the current situation. And someone, uh, someone who stands out to you, yeah, I can't be all bad. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. But before we settle down and do our thing, there's something I'd like to confess again. And don't worry, it's just happened. Yesterday I found out a few days ago our club president here was kicked out of her house. Aww. He looks all sad now. She was on the night and made his sister's room last night, and unless made his parents don't agree, she'd be staying at this house until something can be done. The other girl take a moment to process. Well, why didn't you tell anybody? Honestly, I can't think of a good reason I should have told someone I know. I can't say I like the idea of you spending time with Josh alone, but Josh, you did good. But yeah, it's a bit too harsh to judge you. Aw, thank you. Thank you, girls. Thank you for appreciating me more. They're all so happy and everything. Like, yeah, I made you all happy. I'm such a good person. I'm such a good person. Glad to hear it. Home oh, my arm in fake pain. Just don't break my arm. I'm already in a lot of pain as it is. No promises. The girls burst out laughing again. I laugh along with them for a while, but then the laughter dies. But what if Mady's parents don't let Monica stay? Uh, that's the million dollar question. Look, I don't think his parents would turn down Monica right it. Monica away, away outright. They might talk to Sayori's parents about letting her stay there instead. Mom would definitely agree. On the off chance she doesn't though, what are you going to do? I'd offer you to stay with me, but Dad isn't, won't allow it. Oh gee, wonder why? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, you could stay with me. My parents are paying for the apartment I'm living in. Oh, you're by yourself? You live by yourself? Huh, I didn't see that coming. Yeah, this is a small place, but it's cozy. I'd be willing to share. No, it's okay, Yuri. I appreciate the offer, but I sh couldn't invade your personal space. I know you need to decompress out of school. Everyone, it's okay. I'll be fine. Don't worry. Let's just spend the day as we always do before we share poems. Without the crowd disperses, Monica marches straight to the teacher's desk, sits down, and begins typing. Yuri glides to one of the other desks and puts, pulls out another book. Let's keep trust. Sweeps her closet to pull out her manga. Sayori skips to another desk and begins writing something. Finding a spot at a desk, I sit down. I don't really feel like reading anything or even joining any of the others. I look down at the desk and lay my head down, trying to rest a bit more. Oh, my hair my mind is all over the place. I can't help but feel incredibly guilty at how I basically stole Mage's body for my own purposes. I try to think of what I can say or do for Mage to make up for this for him, but nothing seems good enough. Just not about to say something, Mage speaks up. Josh, we need to talk. Yeah, I was just about to say the same thing. I sit up. Saying I do my best to stretch. Is this another dark part? I can't remember. This is where he starts to say dark stuff or whatever. Noticing my, me standing, Monica turns towards me. Josh, are you okay? Yeah, I just gotta use the restroom. I'll be right back. Well, okay then. Hurry back. It's all time to share poems. Alright, we will do. 
Okay. Oh, it's not good. Ahead in the club. I think this is the part. Okay. Quietly ahead in the class a few doors down. Once we're done, I try to apologize. It's amazing. It cuts me off. You're a real fuck up. You know that, right? Wow, I know I'm out of line, but isn't that a bit much? A bit much. A bit much. Let's talk about what's a bit much, shall we? You promised me. You promised me you take care of my body. And what do you do to immediately after? Major, I didn't. Don't you dare give me that shit. You didn't mean it to. You lied to me. Yep, here we go. I was stupid for trusting you. All you want to do is spend time with Monica. Calm down. Oh, that's right. Rich coming from you. You're the one who completely destroyed my body. I did not completely destroy your body. I started getting pissed as well. My mouth begins running. Okay, smart ass. What would you have done, huh? Let me guess. Nothing, right? Don't you try to put, put, try to put this on me? You're a selfish fucking bastard. A selfish bastard, am I? Oh, my man. Tell me who's the heartless asshole who started becoming a recluse and abandoned the one good thing he was had going for him. Don't you start. Don't even go there. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe he did cause her depression. Oh. Oh. Oh, that's it. You fucker. Oh, my. Get out of me now. He grabs our neck and rips me out. Get out of my head. Get Look at the name right there. Get out of my head. Get out of my head. I am flung across the desk. He is here. I am here. I ignore the pain because on only one thing matters. He must die. Crack his neck. My life was... I can't tell you this perfectly. Fine. Before you showed up, it was simple. Ordinary. St standard issue. And I was happy with it. But then you, oh my god, showed up and ruined everything. I hate you. Josh, MJ, what are you doing? What's happening? This doesn't concern you. I hit the antagonist. Wait, wait. What a heck. Monica's thrown back against the wall, slamming into me and slamming down. I look at shock and horror on her face. She followed me. Why are you following me, girl? You shouldn't follow me. Actually, it's probably better that you follow me. Oh, that took a lot of energy to read all that. Monica looks at me in horror. What What did we just do? I try to speak. I can't. I'm trembling just as much as Monica is. The two of us look at each other, breathing heavily. Josh, Josh. I try to move Major's body, but it gets paralyzed in fear. Finally, I get the left arm moving and grab a nearby desk, quickly pulling myself as the best I could. Or I can't stand up and just... I to crawl. I really pull myself towards Monica. Josh, please don't hurt me. Damn it. Stop crawling and begin to sit up facing her. M Monica, I... Don't I... Stay away! Monica rushes out of the cl classroom. I try to run after her. But I'm too weak. What the fuck? What the actual fuck? Did I really just say those things? I... We, we, what the hell? God, I really am an asshole, aren't I? What the hell just happened? I don't know. I don't know. Wait, what did we just do? I don't know. Two of us go in silence for a bit. Mayj, Josh, listen. But let me go first. Okay. You're right. I was completely out of line. Yeah, we were, but I shouldn't have reacted like I did. Are you kidding me? You reacted completely reasonable. You're right. I did break a promise. You reacted like anyone else would. Doesn't mean it was right. I mean, I, look what happened. Mayj, I always had a problem with my temper. When I said they were going to Uriah, snapped. Any, anyone would have. But I went too far with it. I used your body as my own selfish purposes. I have my knees looking down at the floor gravely. Is there anything I can do to make this up for you? We just need to agree to work together in these things. Or just have it in front of the others, in front of Sayori even. Oh, damn it. That she both said and did things we didn't mean. I was a bigger offender. I crossed so many lines. Yeah, I won't deny that. Okay, that's fair. But we really should let Monica know. Let Monica know. She... Could be really hurt. Right. His body feels stronger, so I stand and walk out. 
look both ways, but I can't see Monica or hear her running. I doubt she's in the club classroom right now, which means head down the stairs, eventually hear her whimping and crying. See Monica curl up in the corner near the door. What are you gonna do? Mm. I'm fucked. I slowly walk up to her. Seeing me, she bolts up. Please don't hurt me. She looks like she's about to run. I stop and raise my hands. Monica, I promise I'm better now. But how can you be sure? You two were separated. Wait, we were separated? And I think about it, yeah. Um, yeah, I did pull you out of my out of me, which hurt like a bitch, I remember. It did, didn't it? Does this mean we we're trying to split? Splitting? Maybe but I have a feeling that kind of separation comes with its own problems. I guess so. But it was something we should keep in mind. Anger feels seems to be a trigger for us. Yeah. We stand there in silence for a bit before hearing a small sob from Monica. Um, should we focus on Monica for now? Yes, we should. I'll sit down slowly, shake him myself small, smaller so I don't appear as threatening. Seeing see this, she slowly sits across from me. I don't know what happened, but what I do know is I screwed up again. Monica wipes her tears from her eyes. Josh, we both screwed up. I look down at the ground. I understand if you hate me now. I really am sorry, you both are. Yeah. I can't stop hearing the guilt and terror, and neither can Mayj. Monica looks over at me. Josh, hold my breath. You really hurt me. You know that, right? I know, girl. I'm sorry. It really hurts to hear, but it's the truth. I look at terror and disappointment slowly begins vanishing. But I don't hate you. I couldn't. It's just who I am. I lean against the wall, looking up. I understand if you did, though. Monica moves over and sits next to me. I don't know what happened yet, but I'm not angry at you anymore. But I am concerned. I don't know what happened. I nod. Same here. I feel her put her arms through mine slowly. She leans on my shoulder. I'll forgive you, both of you. Please promise me that you'll, you will try your best to keep that from happening again. I don't want that you getting hurt from whatever just happened. Relief washing over me. You have no idea how much that means to me. Oh, you made your favor. Monica suddenly looks down at the floor. It's, this is my fault, isn't it? No, no, no. Of course not. This is entirely me and Mayj. You're not to blame here. We both screwed up. It's, uh, it's not your fault. Monica looks up at me. Okay, I trust you. She stands up holding her hand down. She helps me to my feet. Monica's giving me a hand right there. <laughs> Alright. Come now. We should head back. So I see where he might get worried and come looking for us. So I'll brush the dust off my body. Yeah, it sounds good. And she's extremely forgiving. Okay, I got to really work twice as hard on my impulses. Uh, Monica and I head back in. Are you two okay? Are you, are your tummies feeling better now? Monica and I look at each other, attention breaking just then. Yuri and Nazi look over at us from where they're sitting. They come over. What are you two laughing about? Are you sure you two are okay? Yeah, we're all right. Did you eat something bad? Ah, uh, that's. Josh stopped back at the nurse's office to get some extra bandages. I met him on the way back. Oh, okay. Hope you're sure you're okay. I'm sure. Monica looks at the clock. Oh, I think it's time to share poems. Heck yeah. Okay, everyone, let's go get our poems and find someone to share with. I go and grab Mady's bag, retrieving your poems. Okay. I turn, and I think I'm going to turn to saving right here, too. Because it has been quite a while since I've saved. Oh, you keep on startling me. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just couldn't wait. Yeah, I knew she'd be right there waiting, like, a frame one and everything. Oh, I'm here! Give me your poem. Fair enough. <laughs> There's a little bit of silence between us. Clear my throat. Well, why don't the three of us share? Put both mine and Mayday's poem down. Shall I begin? I'll get started by looking at my poem. The Dam. The Hoover Dam? Here's seeing a mix in the mortar, then I head packing it in. It's mostly high dam, hey, holding back and hiding them up. Which can never be released. I heard of... Oh my god, that's a lot of reading right there. I don't really want to read all that. I show off a mortar. A mortar, okay. Uh, uh, drowning me. Save me. Oh. Okay, somebody, anyone help. Save me. And she looks at Mayjays. Friendship. Aw. Wait, okay. Yeah, this is just... I mean, this is... Uh, this, this poem was never seen again. So I guess it's for Sayori or something, but whatever. While she's doing that, I look at hers. Okay, me, I'll actually, I'll actually read hers. Okay, hers way shorter than ours, so that's nice. <laughs> too many big words of mine. Well, too long, you know. New beginnings. A long-worn road or a grassy path. I have traveled the 
former many a time, but now it's time to walk a different path. Ground is familiar, but the grass is greener, landing hopefully happier to pass Rocky underneath the grass to cause his blisters to form. My goal, however, is clear in my vision and see the, the my home. My way is clear now. I want to have what I have not, but can I? Hmm. Well, again, her poem's different from the ones in the game. Guess I shouldn't be surprised. Monk reads both our poems carefully and puts them down. Well, you both have different styles. It's nice to have 20 random words for this. <laughs> I guess so. Anyway, but it does look like some of the mini game went through with Mayday's poem. Yeah, I saw that too. Oh, wait, no, no, wait, I see it the first time. Line. Yep, Sayori's base words. Right, now I get it. Well, what do you think of Mayday's poem first? It's actually not too bad. It makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside. That's not meant to be patronizing. I also feel a very slight tension, tense at the, at the end. I guess that's because of the gameplay we did last night. Yeah, he says yes. Monica nods sadly and smiles again. I like your ry rhyming too. I understand it isn't easy to come up with a poem overnight, but it's impressive that you try to make a poem that rhymes for the most part. I'm with Monica. I did freestyle before. That's more my thing, but you hear the harder out. Pretty impressive, dude. Man, thank you guys. I know it's pretty hard. Pretty bad. Hey, for a beginner, it's pretty good, and I know Sayori will love it. Eh? Oh, she definitely will. And, um, can I see yours, Josh? Maybe it's uh, not Monica, sorry. All right, Monica, hand me my poem back, please. Maybe you haven't seen it yet. All right. She ain't gonna, I was gonna be like, is she actually gonna give me that poem, or is she just gonna fight me for it? Like, no! My poem now! Monica gives me a poem, and I read it carefully. Oh, that's deep. He says that it's deep. It's definitely one of those hidden meanings. There's a lot of vivid Im 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 imagery in this one. I can mostly almost feel like I'm there. I can almost sm smell the, the muck. And yeah, that was my intention. Thank you for the pr praise. What do you mean? What do you think of mine? Again, it's different from the one you normally write. Use the imagery to tell what it is to me. The clear meaning is quite good. A bit cliche, but it's not a bad thing. I mean, there's a couple of meanings here. One could be that Monica has her own route. It could be more normal. Maybe she sees her life taking a new path. Maybe this is, this has more. This would have been her poem. She didn't realize this was a game. That's an amazing analysis, Mei Jay. What do you think so? What did he say? I reply the message or re 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 what, whatever I said. Do you want? This is an interesting hypothesis. What could my what would my poems look like without the empathy? We'll talk about that later. I promise. I look forward to it. Well, let's switch partners. She takes her phones and head over to Yuri. So I guess I'm going to use Sayori and Atsuki. Well, let's find another partner. Whoa, I guess you mean this is Sayori then. Hi! Oh there, maybe I shouldn't have let you eat all that sugar. <laughs> I love chocolate, what can I say? What can I say except I love chocolate? <laughs> Fair enough, yeah, he loves saying that. Fair enough, just saying. Put <laughs> both poems down, which Monica immediately grabs. Or, Monica! Sayori! <laughs> Monica's on the brain, you know? Sometimes you just think just Monica so much, it gets to the point where it's like, who's the, all the other people? Look over a poem, rushing myself with his contents. Um... I think this is the same thing. Uh... You guys can pause it and read it if you want. I, I don't know if this is the same one. I... It's... I, I don't know. I'm, I think it's the same one, because I remember something about bottles, so yeah. Alright, so at least Major can read it. I don't know, I wait for Sue to finish ours. Oh, wow, those are better than yesterday's. In, in both, th there's good. In both, there's some good feelings. Maybe this was pretty good, wasn't it? Yeah, they're both good. Maybe it was very uplifting, and I really liked it. Are you sure you didn't like it because of who wrote it? Yeah, <laughs> that's part of it, sure. But I like to think that I know Major better than most you than most, you know. So when I read his poem, it's not just a poem. It's a Major poem, and that makes it feel extra special to me. Like I can feel his feelings in it. Sayori hugs as she against her chest, reach over and rub Sayori's hair gently. Such a little s s ray of sunshine. <laughs> can't keep it if she wants. I wrote it for her. Maybe it says you can keep it. Thank you, Mayjay. Tries to take it in, but I stop her. After we're all done sharing. <laughs> yeah. Your poem, Josh, it's really sad. Uh, I guess that's my style. Is everything okay? Eh? Not, not good. She can't be worrying about me, too. I'm fine, Sayori, really. Are you sure? Damn, she's pretty perceptive. I got to throw her off. Really, I'm fine. Really, that's your best, dumbass? Yeah! Okay, if you say so. I'm so, not so sure she believes you. I'd be surprised if she, if she did believe me. He's usually 
receptive about feelings of others. It doesn't help that my poem was painfully obvious. Yeah, I was pretty dumb. Well, thanks, man. Hey, raspberry noises. <laughs> okay, you. Let's just get back to the poem. All right. Well, any critiques? Well, I'm not really good at critiquing it out if poems are good or bad. But that's just what I go with my heart. If it makes me feel things, it would be a good poem. What kind of poems do you like anyway? Well, I do like happy poems. I also like sad poems. No, it's a mix that I like. That's the world I'm looking for. Bittersweet. Bittersweet poems are pretty powerful. I can't see her liking sad poems, though. At least I didn't before. Maybe she doesn't like, think you're the type to like sad poems. Well, I like happy poems the most. But sometimes when you get uh, rain clouds in your head, it's a sad poem. Can give you that rain cloud a hug and make a happy or rainbow. That's a good way to put it. Very poetic. Yeah, it is. Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, MJ. Thanks, Josh. I hold up her poem. Well, why don't we go to get on to yours? Okay, what did you think, MJ? Sarah did really. Did you really write this? I relied and relay the message. Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I got I'm gonna write the best poem ever? I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I can tell this is very good. It's pretty sad, too, if you look past the happy thoughts. Eh? What do you mean? I mean, look at the speaker. They give up so much of themselves to make others happy, but where is the happiness left for them? A very bad, a very good poem overall. You should be very proud. Aw, oh, thanks. I feel like I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even, even helps me understand my own feelings a bit better. Writing is like magic. You have absolutely no idea. Writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. Stop with the death flags. Let's hope it's a very long and happy life. I look forward to reading your poem, your book of poems as as May J. Of course we are. Also, can I keep her poem? Can May J keep your poem? Yes, of course. I need to show you the rest of the club room bathrooms you can. Great. See you later. You too. She walks off. Who's next? Natsuki, I can't call her the other name anymore. Or Yuri. So I guess Natsuki, yeah, Natsuki, yeah. Looks like she's been waiting. I've been waiting for you. It took you long enough. What were you and Sayori talking about? Oh, you know, just Mario 64 and stuff. <laughs> Poems. <laughs> sure. She seemed upset. I promise, I didn't make her upset. Okay, let's get these two poems then. She takes out her poems and I read her poem for Major Sick. Any like size, you know. This is the same one from the game, okay. Like, this is the same one from the game, so yeah. This is the Amy doesn't like spiders one, so yeah. I do remember this one. I love Natsuki's theme for some reason. It just sounds good, you know? But I, it's honestly my favorite out of the four of them with their themes. It's supposed to be, like, kind of cute and everything for her, like, which fits, but I don't know, there's just something about it, like, especially the coming up part right here. Let's just listen. Alright, that's enough. <laughs> hey, I got a question. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, yeah, I like... Um, you know, we read this when we played the game, but what does it mean? Well, many fans of the game believe it has two meanings. Something that Amy's a reference to Yuri, and Spiders is a reference to her cutting. I was that Natsuki is writing about herself and her love of manga for a Roman outsider's perspective. Well, she's... She'll explain it herself soon. Finally, Natsuki finishes our poem. She doesn't look happy. Ah, this wasn't supposed to happen at all! Why can't you two just be bad at this? My poems are supposed to impress you two, not the other way around. Natsuki, did you just compliment us? No, I mean, you know. Natsuki struggles a bit, but she's struggling to think of an excuse. I press the attack. Hold up, back up a bit. Huh? You're trying to impress me, but yesterday you hated my guts. <laughs> How many times do I have to tell you? I don't hate you, I... I... Oh crap, I said something wrong. Guess she feels guilty about yesterday. Natsuki, I'm sorry, that's completely rude of me. Let's just continue. Damn. And to answer your question, yes, I saw you. How you and Yuri were talking about her writing yesterday. I didn't like feeling left out. That's way more honest than I expected. No kidding. I'm sure I made you feel left out. I'll try not to in the future. We both will. Hmm, fine. So what else can you tell me us about your poems? What about me, royalty? Indeed, peasants. <laughs> They're not that bad, are they? No, it's just... Josh, your poem's a bit too fancy in my taste, but it's not as fancy as Yuri's, and I can see it. I can see good meaning. 
Honestly, if like this is actually me writing poems here, like it would not be this good. I, my poem writing is very terrible. Like uh, the cow, there once was a cow, and I I can't even think of anything on top of my head. I, I'm playing a game right now. I don't need to make a poem right now. Bayjay's is simpler, but it's got a clear mean to it. She chuckles. You two got lucky, you know. Lucky with writing poems like this. Don't get used to it. You, you two won't always manage to write poems this well written. I mean, good. No, I mean, <laughs> you think of our poems are good, huh? No, why are you smiling? After he shoves the poem back towards me. Don't read too much into it, okay? Definitely it's cute. But her lines change. After her saying our poems are bad, after all. Script, you're so strange sometimes. I won't, I promise. Well, anyway, you're gonna tell me what you thought about mine right now, right? Don't forget what who the real pro is. Yeah, sure. Ah, uh, yes, ma'am. Well, it's certainly longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. Hope you don't think that that's the best I could do. Yeah, I, I was gonna hope not. Yeah, I say and make a dramatic pose. It wasn't even your final form. <laughs> You're a dork. Guilty as charged. Anyway, do continue. Sit back down. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I had to explain it. We're going regardless, right? <laughs> yep, here she goes. Sometimes you can explain complicated itches with such simpler analogies, and it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like, anyone could agree with that subject of this poem as an ignorant jerk. Well, that's true. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or a guilty pleasure. Sometimes they are afraid of people find out they make fun of you or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares about something like as songs, like likes, as long as they're not hurting anybody and makes them happy? I think people really need to learn to expect others for liking weird things. I agree with you up to a point. Huh? What do you mean? Some hobbies that people have can be self-destructive. Your manga and baking hobbies aren't that, but there are some more intense hobbies that can be harmful. I would never judge anyone for their likings or dislikes. That's just how they are. But the thing is, some hobbies are dangerous and can lead to the hobbyists getting hurt. I understand that. I'm glad you could appreciate this kind of writing. Just looking for, look forward to tomorrow too, okay? You bet I will. All right, one more to go here. Turns to Yuri standing at me. Yeah, whatever. What is with them all disappearing like right behind me as soon as I'm done talking to one? Hey, Yuri, I hope you're doing all right. At, right all right after, you know. Ah, uh, no, I'm feeling much better now. May I see how you two have written today? No. No, I'm skipping you, and we're just moving on with our lives. <laughs> sure, here you go, here you are. Hand you your two poems. She begins reading, I take note, take over hers. Just let Mayday see it again. Okay, the raccoon, is this just, I think this is the same one too. Because I thought I remember a raccoon, like in the a cutting knife. I, I think this is the same one again. So, we go ahead and pause and read it, all that crap. I've seen it before, I put the paper down to find Yuri still reading. Hmm. Hmm. So she's reading Mayday's right now. Wake up, Yuri. Oh, sorry. I forgot to s start speaking. Um, I chuckle. It's fine, this is a rather unusual session today. Take your time. After a couple se session seconds, Yuri clears her throat. May I start with Mayday's poem? Of course. Um, thanks, Josh. So, Mayday, this is your first time writing a poem, right? Well, yes. Why do you ask? I rely on the message. I'm just making sure. I guess that it would be after reading through it. Could you explain to Major what you mean? Here he holds up Major's again. This one is actually not bad for a first attempt. There's some pretty novice rhythm schemes, but you're not to blame here. It's just that there are specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers. And having been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think the most noticeable thing I recognize in new writers is that they try to make their style feel deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick a writing style separate from the topic matter, and they form fit they form fit the two together. The end result is that both the style and expressiveness are weakened. She sounds like an expert. Her stutter is gone. She's like this when she gets on topic about things she likes. She can go on, but like I said, that's just something. That's not something you should be blamed for. There's some other different skills and techniques that go into writing even a simple poem, not just finding them, building them, but Getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It, may, it, may, it might make some time, but it all comes with practice and learning by example and trying new things. I also hope that 
everyone else in the club gets your valuable feedback. Natsuki can be a bit biased, though. Biased how? Um, well, I think everyone here is biased in their own way. We all got our own likes and dislikes. Hmm. Sure, Natsuki has a love for cute things and for influences, but what kind of literature she likes and dislikes, but the same principle applies to everyone here, including you, girl! Including you, you like your fancy frou-frou stuff, your tea and your horror and all that, so yeah. <laughs> I was just talking to Z earlier. earlier. She's telling me that she likes very sweet literature. If, if a poem made her feel things, she'd think they're great. And then there's you. Remember when you visited us on Tuesday? You told me you like deep and complex words. Yeah! Big fancy words, girl! <laughs> and it really shows in your poems. Yes, that's true. I still shouldn't have said that. That's alright, we all said things sometimes. Anything else? Let me ask a question if I may. Sure. Um, am I wrong in assuming this is an ode to Sayori? Well, that unexpected just keeps showing up. Grin... And spiritually. Oh, yeah, it is. So, so is. Traitor. <laughs> oh, gosh, the series is the most trustworthy out here right now. If you won't tell. <laughs> That's sweet. Your secret saved me, Major. Girl, I hate you. Now you love me and you know it. <laughs> so, what, what about my poem? You've definitely been writing for a while and it shows. Your poem yesterday was pretty exact, extra, extraordinary. But today you wrote quite a powerful poem. I was inspired by you and everyone else. I wanted to make sure vivid images and leave the poem somewhat open to interpretation, just like your poem yesterday. Yuri visibly swallows in her hands. Uh, pure sweaty girl, calm down. Wait, am I going down to your route? No, I'm not. No, uh, no, no. Monica route. Restart the game. Restart the game. We're doing okay. <laughs> no, because yeah, it's like the poem too. Weird. I'm not used to this. Yuri, are you okay? I don't know. I give Yuri the time she needs. Yuri breathes and collects her thoughts. Yeah. Just being appreciated like this, I guess. It probably sounds really stupid, but seeing someone motivated by my writing, it just makes me really happy. I know we play this game and all, but seriously, she doesn't seem like the type who doesn't hasn't shared her work. Wait, he sure you've never shared your work before? Yuri nods. I really only write for myself. And besides, People would just laugh at me. I smile gently and lower my voice a bit. Am I laughing at you? Did the other club members laugh at you? Yuri shakes her head slowly. I understand how you feel. It's scary to share something so in 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 intimidate as a poem, but hear me out. No one here would laugh at you. We are all friends here. Friends are supportive and caring. We would never mock y your work like our bullies yesterday. You think so? Or earlier, I should say. I know so. Your work in this club will always be appreciated. Thank you, Josh. Um, what do you think of my poem? It's very fancy, you know? Okay. <laughs> I was a bit more daring with this one than yesterday's. You're not kidding, this is an amazing poem, much more metaphorical. I'm guessing this is more the style you're used to using. That's correct. Using the, the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. I wanted to express the way it, it feels for me to indulge in my, my more unusual hobbies. Cutting. Damn, we gotta help her. We will. Some sort of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself, so I sometimes enjoy writing about them. We all have hobbies that are embarrassing to talk about. When mine was collecting swords, I just selling them off before I woke up here. Ah, oh, man. You did? Honest to God. Damn, I like swords too. But mine aren't real, unfortunately. Like, I don't have any real swords. I, I, I like them. You know, I had Cloud's Buster Sword, the Master Sword, um... Well, it's not really a sword, but Joker's Dagger from Persona. And I want to get other ones, too. Like Heroes from Dragon Quest XI and everything. And uh, some other ones, yeah. Collected swords. Yeah, I was terrified a minute. I was afraid it'd be seen as that American who wouldn't sh who would shoot up the school. But in this case, stab up the school. Once I was 17, though, I wasn't afraid to admit it. Sure, my former classmates teased me, but not too seriously. It's a shame they aren't real. Your former classmates sound like good people. They aren't real. What? What do you mean they aren't real? Uh, oh, because I, I I get it. It's the second personality like that just came up and everything. I get it now. How many people like that in your life must have been quite a pl pleasant experience. Well, you do have friends. You have me, Major, and the others in this club. They never, they wouldn't ever judge you. Damn right. I chuckle. Major disagreed with me. And I know for a fact Natsuki would too. Natsuki, why? Natsuki wrote about something like that too, actually. About someone being critical for a strange interest. Huh? She, she did? You didn't read the poem? 
I read her poem earlier, but I must have missed that part. Yeah. We got into a little small discussion about it. She's saying it doesn't matter if you're in, into as long as you're getting, you're not hurting yourself. She's right. And I mean, does she really feel that way? Yes, indeed. That's why that's interesting. To me, she seemed like the kind of person who would make fun of my hobbies. I suppose that's my fault for judging, isn't it? Uh, please don't er tell her I said that. Here, it's okay. If I'm honest, I would, I w it would make sense that you'd think that. I'm guilty of those kind of things, sometimes, thinking sometimes too. But we just need to learn from the experience to keep it in mind. And please know that I will never ever judge you for your hobbies. Neither would anyone else here, including cutting yourself. I'll help you get over that, girl. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing with me. You're good in a lot of things. Writing, listening. There's really something many people like. There really aren't many people like you, Josh. I'll take that as a compliment. Smile at her. It's just how I feel. I never would have thought I'd feel so comfortable sharing my writing. Girl, are you falling for me too? Right. Well, I almost feel like I look forward to it. It's just a really nice feeling. And you were to thank for that. Your smiles sincerely at me. Timidness vanishes. I smile warmly back here. Anything I can do to help? Oh, this is going to be awkward. Well, that was an interesting turn of events. It's like the game can't make up its mind on who I'm appealing to. There's no harm. See me. There's no harem ending, I hope. Or do ya? <laughs> but sure, that should be a mess. But with the absence of a poem game, I'm guessing it's improvising. I wonder what that mini game is, anyways. Where maybe Monica knows. But again, putting myself away as I'm pondering this. If Monica and Siri continue to take, talk about their problems, I see Yuri, Walker, and Natsuki. Oh, I hope they're not gonna get in a fight. I'll go to them just in case. Ladies, everything okay? Yuri and Natsuki look up at me. Uh, Josh, hello again. Hello, hey there, what's going on in this thread? You're not going to start fighting, are you? No, you dummy, you're just telling me something. Oh, what about? About how handsome I am? Okay, <laughs> well, that's about Natsuki's poem earlier. I was just asking her about it. I see. And she doesn't want Natsuki to get mad at me for mentioning it to her. I wonder, will this result in the beach? In the beach poems? Okay. Well, to answer your question, Yuri, yes. I mean, people who, who judge others based off of a hobby is stupid. If you do it on your own, if you do it on your own and isn't hurting anybody, what's the harm, huh? Look surprised at Natsuki's words. Well, I didn't realize you felt that way. What's that supposed to mean? Uh, I didn't mean I. Uh, hey, it's okay. It's a bit. It's a bit of my fault for how I've been acting, especially after yesterday. So I'm sorry. Well, that was unexpected. Natsuki just apologized. So damn strange. Well, I agree. Uh, I mean, about the message about your poem, not about. Uh, it's okay, Yuri. I understand. Go on. Yuri takes a deep breath. You're absolutely right, Natsuki. Plenty of hobbies don't hurt my anyone. And it's no one else's business. Glad we're agreeing on something. Yes, I am pleased to know that as well. As well, Home and Talk Major speaks up. It's nice seeing th them like this. It really is, but... But... This may lead to the beach poems. Beach poems? In the game, sometimes Yuri Natsuki write about the same topic. This is it. The player doesn't appeal to them, to appeal to them as much. Huh, okay. Hey, I, I have an idea. Yes, so do I. Moment of truth, what's it gonna be? 3, 2, 1, ignition! Let's write about the same topic. What? Matt and Yuri. They said the, the same thing time. Litta! We have Litta! Columbia! You have cleared the tower! Eh? The girls look, sh look sh shocked that they seem to have the same idea. Um, did we just have the same idea? Looks like it. I mean, it was pretty funny that we wrote about the same thing. Yeah, I suppose it was, yes. So what topic do you wish to write about? Hmm. That's things hard. Then as as, as as if remembering I'm there, she looks at me. Josh, any ideas? Me? Yeah, dummy. Hmm. What should I do? Should I tell them to si decide or decide for them? You know, I shouldn't interfere here. Well, since this is your idea, shouldn't you come up with one? Huh? Come on, Josh. No, not he's, he's right. Remember what happened yesterday? We shouldn't get Josh or Major involved. I guess she doesn't want to be reminded. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Sorry, Josh. It's okay. And then Momonatsuki lines up. I got an idea. Oh, what is it? That's right about the beach. I knew it. Oh, why's that? Because the beach is awesome. Oh, well, I'm okay with that. Even if it's a bit insane. What? What was that? Yeah, what was that, girl? <laughs> Nothing. I was surprised. I didn't expect to get involved in that discussion. So strange. What's going on with this script? I don't know. It gets weird every day. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? 
I have something extra planned today, so if everyone could just sit at the front of the room, that's a lot of work to do, girl. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. If it's about... No, it is about the festival. Um, do you really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we could put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with the last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're just going to keep it simple and tasteful, okay? We don't need much more than a few decorations. Besides, the festival is next week, not tomorrow. We have plenty of time to prepare. Siri has been working on posters and I designed a, some pamphlets we can get our out, get out during the event. Okay, that's great and all. But is there any reason you're avoiding the question? What are we doing? We're performing poems! Yep, just like in the game. Performing! <laughs> oh, Monica. Don't have a heart attack, Gary. We're going to do standing and performing in front of the whole... Whoever comes to check out the art club. As no one shows up. Just like, uh, the cricket sound effects and everything. All I need from your... I mean, you are your poems to recite so I can put them in the pamphlets. But the best part is we're going to let anyone who wants to come up and recite poems too. Siri's putting in all the posters in case anybody wants to prepare ahead of time. Check it out! Come to the Literature Club, room 3D. Yeah, here are members for... Uh, I'm hiding this, by the way. Members for perform poetry, snacks provided. Students are free to perform in if so desired. See you there. That's a nice poem. Or thing. What? What the heck was that? Uh, I don't know. The game... The background there kind of glitched out for a second there. I don't know if that... I don't know if you guys saw that in the recording, maybe I'll see an editing, but I don't know what that was, but whatever, dude. Sarah so hands out a pretty interesting uh, looking poster. She looks pretty proud. Yeah, she does. <laughs> oh, for the love, Monica, did you already begin putting these posters up? Siri so puts down a poster, seemingly sensing trouble. Yeah, well, I did. Do you really think it's a ba that bad of a, an idea? Well, no, it's not a bad idea. I didn't sign up for this, you know? There's no way I'm going to in front of a group of people like that. I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys, that's the same talking, sorry. I'm sorry, maybe today wasn't the best to bring it up. I mean, we never shared our poems with each other since all a few days ago. It's a lot to ask for us to recite our poems allowed to a whole room of people. I guess it's kind of, over I kind of overlooked that. Besides, this week has been overwhelming for all of us, so I'm sorry. There's a tense silence I decide to put in my two yen, or as my hand. Hey, can I say something? Everyone looks at me. You all love this club, right? Gary and you look away. I can tell this place is special for all of you. And Monica's been working really hard to make this a fun and safe space for all for you all, right? I think it's only fair that we at least get Monica... Monica's idea a lesson, excuse me. Sound good? I turn back to Monica. Monica? Thanks, Josh. I did overlook the fact that we just started. But, I still think we should give it, give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and, and each of us put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people will perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah! It's about expressing your feelings, being in, intimidate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right. And those are the reasons that that we're in all this club today. Don't you want to share with that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if that takes all it takes is standing up in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know we can do it. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Yuri looks worried. Natsuki opens her mouth a few times, but closes it promptly. Finally, she speaks. Ugh. Okay, fine. I guess the... I'll just have to get it, uh, get it over with. All right, phew. Thanks, Natsuki. Yuri, I won't force you to do this. You've been through a lot these past few days. No, I'll do it. You're right, Monica. I love this club. Uh, that's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh wow. Not if I have anything to say about it. Now that's now we're in agreement. Let's move on to the main event. I want each of us to practice reciting a poem in front of each other. No way. Monica, this is too sudden. The more you practice, the more le the less nervous you'll become. I grab my poem. I'm more, I'm no performer, but I at least try, like to try. Besides, if you, you can recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do in front of uh, strangers? Oh no. I'll go and put a hand on Yuri's shoulder. 
Remember what I said earlier, no one here is going to hate you or judge you. I hope so. I know so. Don't worry, I'll start off to help everyone feel a little bit more comfortable. Can I go next? Ah, of course. Now let's see. I'll give us here a notebook. She then sta stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is called, The Way They Fly. Hmm. I listen eagerly waiting to hear, actually hear said poem. It's never shown in the game, act game after all. A feather falls from a cool autumn sky. The grass gratefully accepts the offering. I look up and see the formation flying south for the winter. The ever, ever engroaching winter. I'm sorry if I messed up here. And I stand out and watch them fly by. The way they fly. The way they fly. So free. So genuine. But with a forbidden or order. Following the leader. The leader with ex which exper experiences troubles and tribulations. He must bear the blunt and form the V. And I sit and watch them fly by. The way they fly. The way they fly. Another group of birds fly. An absolute flock. Flock. Sorry, flow. Like water through the ever darkening evening sky. It covered the rising moon. Really before heading for a warmer climate. And I lay there forever. And I watch them fly by. They fly. They fly. Away. They fly. Manga saw six there, frozen in shock. I was shorter than I thought, but whatever. That was amazing. He starts started out very strong. Chris clear voice car carries clear across the room. Her performance was flawless and she put right emphasis in the right places. I hope I read that decently too. I mean I missed that a few times, but the way I said they fly was so dramatic, you know, you gotta get a like for that. Alright, there's some desperation in her tone though. Sensible, but it was there. She snuck out two glances my way, and our eyes met each other each time. It was hard for me to take my eyes off of her. Everything else was focused on her during the performance as well. Sarah looked amazed. Fury had an intense expression on her face. Nazi just looked un non whatever she she looked. Okay, whatever. <laughs> After a few seconds of stunned silence, I stand and clap. The four of us applaud. I think I can hear Mayju whistling of appreciation. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That, that was so good, Monica! Uh, thank you so much. I was just hoping to get, set a good example. Are you kidding? You said the bar so high it was that good! But thank you, thank you, Josh. Are you ready to go next, Yuri? Well, I'll go next. Huh? Yuri's fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clenches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quietly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each one of us. You can do it, Yuri. It's called, After Marriage, a Crimson Eye. Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. Her voice shakes, she starts reading the poem. As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. Yuri's shadiness slowly vanishes, revealing a calm confidence as she speaks. Not like Monica's po boisterous confidence. It's like how she is when she talks about her books, something that interests her. I guess we're not reading hers. Agreed. Let's see what it's like in her head. Fierce and confident and boiling with emotions, wanting desperately to be expressed. And you thought the literature club would be boring. When did I say that? Oh, hush and let's listen. With a single step, I reach out to, towards you, my crimson-eyed angel. You reach back, your eyes, the colors of ember. Your slightly torn wings spread intimately. You begin to embrace, but your eyes flash and you vanish, leaving emptiness. I implore you to return. Arms outstretched and fear, feeling for a handhold. Gloom overshadows me, and internal mi mist outstretched. All I can see in your eyes, pale green on my retinas. My charming angel, my lovely self, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? My angel, my angel, have you been, have you forsaken me? Why have you forsaken me? Sorry. The soft breeze envelops me as I feel the thin, Tendril thrills my angel's fingers on my shoulders. The crimson of your eyes illuminate the mist. I turn and face you, afraid and glad to see you. Your eyes are flame with emotion, your wings are flame with comfort. I reach out and again and our hands in interwined. My angel, my crimson eyed angel, I can never forgive your, forget your eyes. For even when you are not there, I can always see them in my dreams. Eventually, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Normal expression. Personally, it returns. I. 
Me and clapping first. Yay, Yuri! Yay! Everyone joins me afterwards and we begin to give Yuri the recognition she deserves. You were magnificent. You did do so well next week. Um, I hope so. As we applaud, Yuri holds a palm to your chest and rests back there in your seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. My turn. Siri lost out of her chair and deeply walks over to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Fine. Ha ha ha. Sorry, I giggled. <laughs> it's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Don't worry, Sayori. Try not to think of it like you're saying to other people. Imagine you're just saying to yourself, like in front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out just the best way that it can, or whatever. I see, I see. I see it! Okay, then. She so somehow feels like her soft voice brings out the raw emotions of this poem. Her performance isn't as dynamic as Monica's, as, or a full, as full of emotion as Yuri's. Actually, it sounds a bit bittersweet. I love my meadow. The grass is soft and cool. The breeze cool and refreshing. The sunlight warms the salty dew under my feet and on my face. The grass is like a lost, long lost friend. To a shade, I'd like to descend. The sun rises and it gets hot. I look around for a cool spot. I look for a shadow and see a big tree. I run towards it and sits against its strong bark. The meadow covers the world with a warm blanket. The shade is cool and inviting. I really love my meadow. Infinite lines of grass all in a row. It's warm and cozy under this tree. The rosy breeze just feels so free. Maybe it wants me to stay forever. I really want to stay here forever. Forever. Siri finishes and we applaud. Yay, Sayori, yay. I did it. Good job, Sayori. I guess that's just a good sign. You came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of this poem fits you perfectly. Thank you, Monica. I've been practicing that kind of poem. Or that kind of thing. It is a bit embarrassing to do in front of everyone. <laughs> Don't be embarrassed. You did really well, Sayori. I'm proud of you. Me too. Thanks. Now, who's next? Natsuki? Mm, don't make me go before Josh. It's not like I can be... I can compare it to any of you, anyway. Even him. It's not like I like you or anything, you baka. Don't ever call me that, that name Motomoto again. <laughs> Natsuki. Well, that's different for the game. Does she feel like her poem's inferior? Okay, Natsuki just kneeled to her right. Natsuki, I love your poem for today. I love to hear you perform something. That's how it's not fair for you to compare yourself to the rest of us. He's right. Monica walks over to the other side of Natsuki's desk. We all are, have our own strengths and weaknesses. You have your own unique way of writing that deserves to be heard. Fine. I'm going. I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets up out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. She gets up, I lean over and whispers to Monica. That girl's a dear. Soon dear. <laughs> A dairy, a sundere. Eh? <laughs> I don't think that's how it's pronounced yet. She snickers. Nazi reaches the poem. The poem is called. It's called. Why are you all looking at me? You know what? Why wouldn't we? Because you're presenting. Mm. Anyway, the poem is called Jump. Jump! You might as well jump. Nazi takes a breath. Breath. Yeah, whatever. She gets her side the poem. Her face softens. While she's still a little uneased. I think she's somewhat enjoying it. In my backyard, there's a trampoline with black outlines and gravel between. When no one's around, I like to jump. I jump and jump until I can't anymore. I love to jump. I mean, who doesn't? I reach toward the sky. The world is just so distant. I can't be bothered whenever I jump. It's never felt this free sense or before. Why do I jump? Lots of people ask me why. Because it feels like I'm flying. That's why. I always wanted to fly. It sounds fun. Because if I could, through the clouds, I'd soar. If I could fly away from it all, I would. The ground below is hard. The sky is so soft and good. It's peaceful and fun. It really can't be beat. It's freeing. I want to be flying all the time. I wish I could jump and fly all the, all the time. Natsuki finishes there and applauds. Yay, Natsuki, yay! She has back to her seat. Your turn, big man. Ah, yes, it's truly... Tauntless one. This will be the best one for sure. Sorry, Monica, but you're about to be dethroned, girl. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me. They're watching me. Staring into my soul right there. Especially Monica. She's like, you better be good. <laughs> and the biggest... And also, biggest boobs the smallest of the time. <laughs> oh my gosh, dude. <laughs> Yuri's full of it and Natsuki is just aboard, you know? <laughs> Sorry! He just had to say that, dude. 
That's really welcome. <laughs> my poem is called The Dam. That damn Port Chaos Temple. <laughs> I recite my poem. Not in a rotor. I, I love it a bit at the beginning. But as I continue, I begin feeling more and more confident. The words fl flow from me as I read. I pitch the girls are going to be stunned. Okay, so I'm not going to read mine out loud. Okay, that's fine. Mine's the one he, he had earlier, I think. So, yeah. Long as the person I applaud. Yay! Gosh, yay! Not biased or nothing. Okay, the others join quickly. Oh, except for Nazi. She plots for gradually. I got me with that guy sl climbing slowly. I'm so glad you guys came through. Hopefully you got a taste for what it's like. Yeah, I guess it's probably be easier in front of strangers, though. Wait, really? I thought it would be the other way around for me. Well, if it's in front of strangers, I can put on a, on any face I want. But if it's in front of club members and friends, well, the voice trails off. I get it. That, yeah, that makes sense. Trust me, Nazi. You don't have much to worry about for the festival. Just please make sure you pick up home, get some good practice for the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time. I'll give you your sighting. Will do. All right. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know for the festival is coming up, but I hope that y'all at least try and write a poem for tomorrow, too. I've been working out nicely so far, so I'll try and continue. So for the festival, we can finalize details tomorrow, and we'll have the the weekend to prepare. Monica, or Monday's, I was going to say Monica's the big day. No, Monday's the big day. Today I'm recording this on a Monday. It comes out on a Friday, probably, probably, if my schedule is correct. Or it's been, like, recently, so, yeah. But, uh, yeah. I can't wait. I can do this. I can do this. Yes, you can. Stand up. Man, I'm so glad you're in charge right now. Oh, wait, huh? Seriously, how come? There's no way I'd be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica. Oh, yeah, I mean, that's understandable. How do you do it? Do what? Find that enthusiasm. Hmm. Never heard your expression. Make it until you make it? Yeah. There's your answer. Huh? And besides, no, 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 I can't afford to make a mistake or it's game over, man. Game over! Right, of course. Turn to Sayori. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep. Look at you two, always going home together like that. Even if it is Josh instead of Mayjay. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, she's made his best friend and she's still here. Tap my head and feel my face flush at the same time. Must be a little nice, though. How am I supposed to respond to that? But going home with her? It's very nice. She's a cool gal. It's okay, guys. You don't have to say it. Well, if you're sure, then let's go. Wait, Monica's coming too, right? I grabbed my stuff and just about to leave when I realized something. I turned back to see Monica beginning to clean. Wait, I thought Japanese school clubs had man managers that took care of that. Monica been looking, look, taking care of all this, all this stuff, stuff this whole time by herself. Now I feel bad. Wait, Sir, I forgot. We should help, probably wait for Monica. To point to when, where she's cleaning. Oh yeah, Monica, do you need help with anything? Huh? What do you do before you leave? Uh, no, normally I do sweeping and cleaning. Sir, quickly runs back to the closet, grabs a small hand broom and bust, uh, yeah, dustpan combo, and she begins sweeping the room. I think I begin to arrange the desk again. That chocolate was a mistake. You're a softie. Not to pat my back a bit harder, I squint. Ah, w watch the injuries. You'll be fine. I wasn't even using my full power. Oh, jeez. Oh, my eyes <laughs> would chuckle. She goes in, heads over to organize the closet. One for Yuri. Oh, she's cleaning the desk with a proper towel and a bottle of cleaner. She's humming something. Can't place the tune. I walk over to Monica. She looks up at me. This doesn't happen in it. Did it in the game? Now you know the run through? Nope, this doesn't happen anywhere in the game. Unless she had her own route. Good point, it'd make more sense. Look over to Yuri. Yuri, where'd you get the cleaner? It's in the closet. I grab a second bottle and paper towels and begin cleaning the windows. Monica looks unsure what to do for a bit. Snapping out of her... Whatever that says, she clearly grabs another bottle and paper towels and washes the windows on the other side of the room. We'll, we'll end this video in a bit. I just want to get to this part. Seeing the runes spick and span. That was worth the extra time. See y'all tomorrow. Siri, Monica, let's go. Turn out the lights. We all leave. Let's go. Out of there. We're out of this school. We're out of here for good. We're out of here. Yeah, it takes you to see us our shoes and head home. Yeah. But I think that's about the spot where I'm going to go end things off for today, guys. So thank you all so much for watching. Hit the like button and comment, subscribe to my channel. So yeah, um, still great mods so far. I mean, I played through it before, so I know, but uh, if you guys want to keep seeing the series, upload uh, like every Friday or whatever. Maybe every Friday, I don't know for sure, but uh, 
Just keep smashing the like button, show it some love and everything, and I'll continue the series. But, uh, yeah. Thanks for watching, and until next time, bye, guys.